Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another episode of Love Beyond Borders. If you're new here, my name is Sarame and I am a South African and I'm married to my husband from Nigeria. And of course, this series is inspired by my marriage, okay? Now on today's episode, today's a follow-up video, you guys, from the episode I did with Kumo, where she spoke about how she got married in 2016 to her husband and how the process was different from how it is right now in 2022. And I also mentioned how, you know, very much different it is is and you know some of you went in the comment section to request that i do a video you know explaining the process of how things are done and some people even went to my instagram to request for this okay now speaking of instagram if you're not following me on instagram please do follow me my handle is somewhere over here and please 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 subscribe to my channel please please kindly subscribe to my channel and also like this video if you enjoyed it at the end and also if it was useful and you think someone needs to hear this please share with them okay and also i've heard a lot of people complain how it's become very difficult to register your marriage here in south africa as a south african getting married to a foreign national and i need to also just remind you guys that back then it was very easy i mean if you just go to the home affairs with your id boom you're getting married and like now where things are you know they've put really strict measures because the minister of home affairs minister Aaron Mutsu lady also came out to say that you know they're making this the, the the process even more strict and making it tighter because they have this year alone they have revoked over 500 fake marriages between South Africans and foreign nationals okay so that's why they're making the rules or making the process even harder because of such discrepancies so oh that's why I'm making this video to let you guys know that the process has changed and it's more strict and um, they require a lot of documents okay so I hope this video is useful to you okay and I need to give a disclaimer okay yo <laughs> disclaimer number one is that i'm not an immigration officer i'm not affiliated to the home affairs of south africa i don't work there so i'm just giving you guys you know my personal experience and also experiences from other people as well as research another disclaimer this is not me saying go and get married to foreign nationals i'm not encouraging anybody to go and get married to foreign national please go and marry whoever you want to get married to okay but anyways let's get right into the video and always remember one love, one Africa. <laughs> Right. now before we go into the process of registering your marriage as a South African getting married to a foreign national in South Africa I need to reiterate that number one you need to be legally allowed to marry number two you need to understand the consequences of getting married legally in South Africa and also you need to remember that if you don't have an anti-nuptial contract you are automatically getting married in community of property now I'm not a lawyer I'm not gonna be um, you know breaking down or debunking all of that I'm gonna leave um, on the screen contact details of a lawyer you can contact to understand what it means to marry in community of property and do other options okay now let's get down to the crack of this video okay <laughs> all right so when you go to the home affairs you need to ensure that you go together okay so you don't go alone as a female nor does your partner go alone as a male you need to go together as a couple and because you're going to book for an appointment to register your marriage you don't need to go with witnesses it's just the two of you but when you go you need to go fully armed and by fully armed i mean you need to go with all the documents that i'm going to list today on this video okay and another thing is that um, say now you arrive early in the morning you stand in the queue and later on they open just make sure you go to whoever is facilitating the queue let them know that you are south african and you're getting married to a foreign national and you want to see the immigration officer this will save you time because they take you straight to the immigration officer's um, office and there is no queue there you find maybe three or four people there and it's quicker than standing in the queue the whole day so make sure you ask 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 okay so when you get to the immigration officer um, the first thing they're going to ask you as a South African is your national ID and you know you might get an officer that wants copies as well so just to be safe please also make copies and get them certified and go with them on that day okay so it's your national ID two colored copies that are certified 
the next thing they'll ask for your partner's passport okay so this is where things get a little bit interesting um they ask for your partner's passport and his permit say a student visa a work visa a business visa whatsoever it needs to be valid okay so say for instance your partner came in 2015 for instance right um and his new passport said issued on maybe 2020 right so they're going to ask him when he came into south africa they know already they just want to they just want honesty when he came to south africa and just remember please 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 be honest um they're going to ask when he came into south africa he'll mention maybe 2015 for instance and they're going to ask which visa he came into the country with so say for instance he came as a student they're going to ask for his expired passport and his expired permit so make sure that you have that as well when you go they might not ask for some people they asked so just ensure you have everything because they're going to ask depending on you know the immigration officer make sure you have these things okay so it's your id your husband's passport his expired passport all his visas from when he entered south africa they do also mention that we can get those things for you but it's going to take time and when i say time i'm talking about six months 12 months because they are working on backlog at the moment okay so just ensure you have um, those documents with right okay now that we have that out of the way the next thing they're going to request is your proof of residence right so please note if you live in pretoria go to the home affairs nearest to you because if you live in pretoria and you go to the home affairs in centurion or in johannesburg they're going to chase you away they're going to turn you back and say go to the home affairs nearest to you so if your proof of address says that you live in pretoria go to pretoria okay so both of you need to have proof of address and, and ensure that it's the one closest to where you live okay now the next document they're going to request is a letter of none impediment or the letter of no impediment this document comes from your partner's country and it, sh it shows that your partner is single and is not married in his country legally <laughs> so just ensure that um, you get this document and also please note that they need the original copy so it's either your partner goes to his country to get this letter or he gets someone to get it for him and they send it via DHL or maybe someone that's coming from their country to South Africa, they can bring it along because they do not accept copies. They want original documents. Next document they're going to request for is your Lobola agreement or your Lobola um, contract. Now I know this might sound new for some people, but um, they are going to request for that. So, so on your Lobola day, there needs to be a contract between your family and your husband's family because remember it's an agreement, right? So for instance, your dad or your uncle or whoever is representing you from your family can write down a contract and on that contract needs to be their name, the name of the family, um, the date of the lobola the money that they requested the money that was negotiated and the money that was paid and whether or not they agree um, to that money and they must also specify that they're handing you over to your husband's family and obviously your names should be there your name should be there your husband's name should be there and his passport number and your name should be there with your id number and yeah just them saying they're handing you over and there needs to also be signatures this contract does not have to be typed out it can be written or it can be typed out and whoever is there on the day can just sign um, just to show that they were there your family members and his family members as well so just make sure that that contract is there because they're going to request for it and also speaking of lobola another tip i'm going to give you right is that the question they asked us they wanted to see the pictures of the day so if you're having a lobola celebration or whatsoever make sure you take pictures and they're going to ask something like can we see was there a tent for instance i don't know how important that is but they ask to see pictures of the tent um some people might not have a tent on the day so if you do have a tent take pictures of that they asked to see pictures of the deco they wanted to see us wearing matching clothes traditional clothes they wanted to see our family members and they wanted to see the food as well i don't know 
if they, they ask everybody that, but just make sure that you capture everything and you keep it safe in your phone or whatsoever. So that on that day when you book your uh, marriage, and they ask for those things, those things are available. So make sure you take pictures, make sure you have all the evidence, okay? So I don't know how important this is. I don't know if it was a foreign national getting married to a white person, they would ask the same thing because you know, white people don't believe in Lomola, but they're going to ask to see a tent, they're going to ask to see you guys wearing matching clothes and all of that stuff, okay? So make sure you have it. So the next document they're going to request for is the affidavit from the SAPS, South African Police Services. So you need to come with two of them, one from your partner and one from you, okay? So when you go to the the police station you need to go with your lobola agreement right so on the affidavit as a female you write that you understand the legal consequences of your marriage and you also stipulate your name your, your id number and your intention to marry this man legally in community or property or out of community or property or you just specify that you've got an anti-nuptial contract whatsoever it is you specify on that affidavit and you also specify that you you guys had he paid lobola on this date your family was present and so forth and so forth and then you mentioned the amount as well um, basically a little bit what's on your lobola agreement must be on the affidavit and your husband as well must also write his an intention to marry you legally um, because your family has has accepted him and also handed you over to his family and that is that that is proven or that is written as well on the lawola agreement and his names are there his um, passport number is there and you guys sign as well and then the police officer will stamp and also sign as well okay so make sure make sure you have an affidavit from the saps Another document that I remembered while I was editing this video is that if both of you have got a kid together or children together, you guys can bring their birth certificates and on their birth certificates, um, I'm assuming your name is there and your husband's name is there as well. So this also proves that you guys are indeed together and you even share a child or children. And lastly, it's the interview. So this is when they ask about your love story, when you met, etc., etc. So just be honest and I think everything should be okay. So yes, you guys, that is it for this video. If you have any questions, if I left out anything, please comment down below and let me know. If you have any questions, please comment down below and let me know. And also follow me on Instagram. My handle is over here. If you have any private questions you'd like to ask, you can go to my DMs and you can ask and we can chat away, okay? And please, please, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to like this video and share with your friends and family. And again, this video, it's not me encouraging South African ladies to go and marry Nigerian men please go and marry who you want to marry okay <laughs> anyway stay blessed and remember one love one africa bye